Welcome to Dive Into NetBeans. This video is for use with our books, Java How to Program 10th Edition and Java SE8 for Programmers, as well as our Java Fundamentals Live Lessons videos. In this video, we'll take a look at where to get NetBeans, how to tell the IDE to display line numbers, how to configure the tab settings in the IDE, how to create a project for managing the source code for an application, how to add existing source code to a project so that you can test our existing examples, and also how to create new source code files so that you can write your own Java programs from scratch. If you have any questions while you're working your way through these videos, please feel free to send me an email or contact me via our Facebook or Google Plus pages that you see here on the screen. Before you can work with the NetBeans IDE, you'll need to install both the Java Development Kit and the IDE itself. Now, if you don't already have Java installed, the easiest way to install both is to get the bundled download, which you can obtain from the oracle.com download site that you see here on the screen. And all you need to do is click the NetBeans button at the top of the page here, which is going to give you a bundle of the latest version of Java SE8's JDK, JDK 8 U5, which is the update number five, and the NetBeans 8 IDE. So if you click that button, you'll be taken to this page where you'll have to accept the license agreement before you'll be able to download and install the software. And here you can see that there are bundle downloads for Linux, for both 32-bit and 64-bit Linux, for the Mac OS X platform, and also for Windows 32-bit and 64-bit versions. Please be sure to read the installation instructions in detail for your platform to make sure that you install the software correctly. Now, once you download and install the software, you'll be able to launch the IDE, which on Windows you'll find under All Programs and NetBeans, and you'll see a link here for NetBeans IDE 8. On Mac OS, you'll have this in your Applications folder in a NetBeans subfolder, and on Linux, depending on which platform you're on, you'll have a similar icon for launching the NetBeans IDE on your Linux platform. Now, you can also get NetBeans from the netbeans.org slash downloads page. And on this page, you'll see that there's actually several versions of the IDE you can download. This is the way you would install NetBeans if you already have the JDK installed on your system, uh, specifically JDK 7 or 8 in particular. And you'll notice here that you can select which platform you want to download for, and you've got Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. You can also download a zip file that contains a platform independent version of the NetBeans platform. And separately, you have these multiple different ways to download it. Now, the default download from the Oracle site is just the basic Java SE download that's bundled with the JDK. In some of our later chapters and live lessons videos, we demonstrate some Java Enterprise Edition features, and we use the NetBeans IDE when doing that. For those chapters and lessons, you would use the Java EE version of the IDE. The IDE also can support C and C++ development, as well as HTML5 and PHP development. So if you have any need for any of these other items, you can download the appropriate version and install it. And once again, you'll want to make sure you follow the installation instructions for your platform. Now, once you have the IDE installed and you launch it, initially the NetBeans window will appear something like this on your screen. Sometimes it will show just the Start Page tab and sometimes it will also show these other tabs at the left side of the IDE. On an IDE that shows just the Start Page tab, when you close that tab, then this Projects uh, window will be displayed on your screen. Now the Start Page is going to give you access not only to any recent projects that you've worked on, but there's also a Learn and Discover tab where you can learn about the NetBeans IDE with some tutorials to help you get into it and also separately a What's New tab that tells you about the new features of the IDE as well. 
Now, one of the things you'll want to do if you're following along with our examples is configure the IDE to display line numbers as well as to uh, configure the tab settings to match our tab settings in our source code. We use three space indents for our tabs, so we'll show you how to configure that now. For line numbers, it's very simple. You simply go to the view menu and make sure that show line numbers is checked, which it is by default in the IDE at the moment. And then separately for tabs, you access that for the settings for the IDE. And to do that on Windows and Linux, you'll go through the tools menu and select options. And on Mac OS X, you'll go to the NetBeans menu and select preferences. And when you do, you'll be presented with a dialogue that looks like this one, the options dialogue. And there are uh, lots of different features that you can configure, but for tabs, we would do that under the editor tab, and then within that under the formatting tab. And you can see by default that there are four spaces per indent, and that the uh, tab size is eight. We use three space indents and three space tabs in our source code. So if you want to match up with what we do, you would put three in each of these fields, then click OK or apply to apply those settings. OK will apply and dismiss the dialog. Apply by itself will simply change the settings. And for this, we did it for all programming languages. So uh, no matter what kind of programming language source code you're looking at in the IDE, as you write source code now, it would use this number of spaces per indent and this number of spaces per tab that you type in the IDE. So now let's demonstrate how to create a project for the purpose of testing existing Java source code programs. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to dismiss that dialog. And you can create a project through the File menu by selecting New Project. You can also click the New Project icon on the toolbar. You can also right-click in this Projects tab and select New Project, as I just did. Now, depending on which version of NetBeans you have installed, you may have additional categories of types of projects that you can select from. And for basic Java applications, like the ones we demonstrate throughout most of Java How to Program, Java SE8 for programmers and our Java Live Lessons videos, the category Java and the specific project type Java application are all you will need. So I'm going to go ahead and select that here and click Next. And you can then specify the name of the project. You can specify where the project will be stored. And you can also specify whether or not you want the IDE to create what's known as a main class. If you're creating a program from scratch, by checking this checkbox, it will create a class that contains a main method, which is the launch point for the application. If you're not creating an application from scratch, but rather dragging in existing source code for testing, then you don't need to check this option. So let's say we create a uh, welcome test project just for argument's sake and we'll go ahead and click finish. So it now defines a new project called welcome test. The source packages folder is where your source code will be placed and for our examples all you need to do for testing purposes is drag them onto this default package node and then you'll be able to open the code in the IDE and run the code and see the output for example. So to start let's do a single source file program. Uh, go ahead to your file system on whichever platform you're running. Locate the source code examples for our book or videos and in the uh, CH02 folder go ahead and select the welcome1.java source code file from the fig02 underscore 01 folder. All you have to do is then drag that onto the default package node and you will see that the code is now incorporated into the project. 
And if I double click that, I can look at the source code in the IDE. Notice that the IDE syntax colors the code that helps you understand what each word in the code represents. Uh, you can see that comments are displayed in gray, so you can kind of scan through them and ignore them if you want, but you can also read them if you need to. Keywords appear in blue. Uh, literal values appear in this kind of yellowish, yellowish orange color. Uh, static objects appear in green italic and there are other settings as well for different language elements and you can actually control all those colors as well through the options dialog that we demonstrated to you earlier. Now if you want to run the program all you need to do is click the run project uh, button and when you do that, if it doesn't know the name of the class that contains main, it will ask you to select that one. And that could be uh, the case if you have a multi-source file program as well. In this case, there's only one file, so we'll just select welcome one, which is the class that contains the main method. And that's the starting point for this program. When you click OK, it will go ahead and build the application and execute it and you can see the output showing up down here in the output window. So that's a simple single source file program. When you have a multi source file program, you need to incorporate all of the source code files into the project in order for the IDE to compile the source code files correctly and be able to run the program. So if you want to test another program, you have a couple of options. You could close the project that you already created, which is available. Well, first, let me select it. So I, you can close the project um, that you already created. You can also simply remove the .java file from this project so that you can then drag in additional .java files. So let me right click here and select delete. Um, if you want, you can check off safely delete and it will uh, make sure that it permanently deletes that from the system. I'm not going to do that. Next, let's go back out to our source code programs and let's go to chapter three folder and the first example there, which has two source code files and simply drag those into the IDE. And as you can see, both of them now appear. We can open up the source code and take a look at it for each of the different files. Notice that account test is the one that contains the main method in this example. And again, you can run the project by just clicking the play button. It figures out that there's only one file right now in the project that contains main. If there were multiple such files, it would ask you uh, and, and show you the list of all the classes that have a main method. When I run this, it's displaying for me the uh, beginning of the program's output. You can see it's asking me to interact with the program right now. It's waiting for my input. So it says, please enter the name. Let me go ahead and type Paul. And when I hit enter, it then displays the rest of the output. And the build successful is the indication that it was able to compile the program successfully as well. Now the IDE is smart and it will tell you when you have problems in your code. So for example, I just deleted a semicolon at the end of line 10 and it immediately gave me an error message which if I hover over the red squiggly line will display what that message is. Notice it also says you can type in this case alt enter to show hints as to what the problem might be. So as you work with the IDE, you'll see various things pop up on the screen to help you with your programming as you move along. So let me go ahead and put that semicolon back in and now the error message goes away. So it's dynamically compiling the code in the background while you're writing it. And that means as you write your statements, you may get error messages even though you're not done entering a particular statement. So if you know you're not done entering the statement, you can ignore those until you complete your statement. If you then still have error messages, you can hover over the red squiggly lines to see what you might have done wrong and then go ahead and fix the problem. The last thing you need to be able to do is to create your own programs from scratch. So let me go ahead and close down the .java files that are here and 
you can either once again remove the existing source code files from the project that you created or you can just go ahead and create an entirely new project so let's try that uh, in this case I'll try by clicking the toolbar button for a new project so again you can create a new Java application let's call this one uh, welcome and we'll go ahead and have it create for us in this case a main class now when you create your own programs from scratch you'll notice that initially it's naming the class that you're going to um, be creating based on the project name and in our source code examples we do not use a concept called packages until much later in our set of examples so this welcome dot that's being placed in the front of the class name here is actually a package name and I'm simply going to delete that so this looks more like the examples that you'll be looking at in our books and videos so when I click finish it's going to create a class called welcome it's going to create a new project as well and you can see the welcome classes file opens up automatically the class file has some comments that are predefined in it these are called Java documentation comments and they can be used to actually insert source uh, insert comments into your code that can be turned into HTML based documentation so web pages for documentation as well um, the IDE by default places curly braces differently from the way I like to do them so I'll just go ahead and move each of these opening curly braces to the next line and at this point we can go ahead and enter some code into the main method here so that we can tell the program to do something now when you're typing code in your main method or in any part of your uh, code the IDE will help you in writing that code so as I type system dot here you'll notice that it pops open a menu of options for things that are allowed to appear on the right side of that dot and system.out is the standard output object and we'll use that to go ahead and display some character information on the screen so let's say I want to print something as I start typing print this menu of options narrows down to only items that start with print and you can see that there's lots of different methods in the system.out object for printing and I want to print a line so I'll do print LN and as I type again it narrows down just to the options that are available at this point and then I put in a left parenthesis when I put in a left parenthesis it automatically puts in a right parenthesis when I put in a left curly brace or a left square bracket it will all automatically put in the corresponding right curly brace or right square bracket as well and here I want to enter a string that's going to be uh, displayed so I'll say welcome to Java in this case exclamation point and now I have a completed simple little program which if I click the play button is going to run and display welcome to Java which is what I just told it to do here in the main method so at this point you're now ready to both test existing Java source code programs in the NetBeans IDE and also to be able to create your own new Java applications from scratch